Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Daphne Aquatics. In this episode, I'm going to be going over Daphnia cultures. I've got two varieties of Daphnia that I'm going to be covering in this uh, episode, so I hope you learn something. So in this uh, container, I've got a, the new variety of Daphnia that I've gotten, which is a larger growing variety. As you can see, they're very active uh, and they've got more of a red pigment to them, so I'm hoping that uh, getting these cultures going will actually enhance, in help enhance some of the colours of uh, my fish. Uh, and then in these other cultures, sorry, let's turn the light off, like this one here, bring away from the light that's going to be bugging out on me. I have Moana, which is a much smaller variety of Daphnia. So the benefit of having these ones are uh, a lot more fish can eat them, especially if you're doing nano fish, because these ones will fit in the mouths compared to these ones, which are considerably larger. So they are the two varieties of Daphnia that I'm now keeping, and I'm just starting to get these cultures going, so they're not on my website yet. You can purchase Moana cultures off my website if you are interested, um, and they're very easy to do, and I'll get into that now. Basics, so I feed a mix of either yeast or green water. These are my two green water cultures. If you purchase any Daphnia off my website, I will send you a green water culture with the Daphnia. So to culture the green water, it's very simple. I've got a LED light on here. These are just 20 litre Kmart tanks. You can either put the green water in the tank if you get it from my cult like the culture with um, Daphnia you purchased from me or you can put some mollies into the aquarium or platies. I find mollies work better because they eat the algae that competes with the green water culture, um, but it's really a dealer's choice. I prefer mollies. If you're going to ask me, that's what I'd recommend, just use mollies. There's 10 mollies in a 20 litre tank with the light on and then adding in the green water culture. That will get the water green reasonably quickly. Another way you can do it yourself if you want to create your own green water and have it clear of any other invertebrates that will compete with the Daphnia, particularly the Moana, which I don't think will be able to outcompete any form of competition. I get the tried and true, everybody's favorite Osmocote Water Garden fertilizer tabs for the aquarium. Uh, the NPK is really high in nitrogen so it's 14 on there it will if you don't have it buried under a, sub, a substrate and you've got it just sitting on top of or in an aquarium with a light on it will turn the water green very quickly of course it depends on the dosage rate if you've just got a 20 litre tank a by like one tablet is more than enough to get the water green if the light's on i take these directions with a grain of salt if you're trying to do a planted aquarium because putting three, uh, two tabs in a 15 to uh, 30 litre tank, I think is excessive, especially if you don't have it heavily planted, because the idea for these ones is they're actually there for re really heavy root feeding plants, such as water lilies. So um, just take these directions with a grain of salt. I'd say if you don't have a heavily planted tank, do half of what the recommended dose is, and you can break these tabs apart. But that's a side note for if you're doing a planted aquarium. For the culturing the green water, two tablets or one tablet in a 20 litre tank like this uh, will get the water green reasonably quickly if you've got the light on. If you get the green cult, uh, green water culture uh, from a, a Daphne culture you purchased from me, it'll definitely get uh, the water green really quickly. And you can see this is like a pea soup green. It's perfect for feeding your cultures. You cannot overfeed green water to your Daphne. It just doesn't, doesn't kill them. So you can put as much green water in your Daphnia culture as you want, and it's just going to be free food for them. Uh, one thing I do find, though, with green water cultures is when you scoop it out and you put it into a container or the culture for your Daphnia, it will eventually, if they're not eating it fast enough, settle on the bottom. And all I do is I just get the pipette or a turkey baster, depending on how large your vessel is, and I just stir it up with that to keep it floating into the water uh, column so that they've got something they can harvest because a telltale sign if your culture is hungry is your Daphnia will congregate around the edges 
of your uh, culture container or bucket, pond, whatever, and try and feed off the edges because they're really searching for anything that they can kind of filter out. So that's a telltale sign. Another sign that they could be hungry. If you're feeding yeast, it's not uncommon for the water to have a yellow tinge, but you sh if you can see all the Daphnia in there, even with the yellow tinge, that usually is an indicator there's no more food left in there, which is a good segue into this, which is yeast I've dissolved into water. You can see it kind of um, like the sediment of the yeast settles on the bottom. So I get a large pipette or turkey baster, whatever you want to call it, stir it up like that and you can see it goes real creamy and milky. Less is more when you're feeding a culture. Um, so this culture I've got to reset, but if I was feeding literally that, which was hardly anything in there, it's more than enough for a day. You'll see the water go really clear if they're eating it quickly and you can always feed a little bit more. But when you're feeding yeast, less is more because you can cause your culture to crash very easily. And I think a lot of people who have tried cultures and feeding yeast have had that experience before. Uh, I was speaking to someone the other day and they really recommend a bug buffet from Nick, keeping fish simple. So his food is a powder food. The Daphnia won't eat it. But if you break up a bunch of the bug buffet into a container of water and you sit it outside in the sun, it will turn the water green really quickly. So that's just a little tidbit. If you can't find any fertilizer or anything, that sort of food works really well for getting a culture of green water going as well. You will most likely, when the culture gets to a certain stage, have to feed every day. So. If I get this culture away from the light that causes a strobe. Oh. Need this to focus. So you can see there's a lot of movement in here. This culture is on the verge of needing to be reset because it's got all that algae growth on the on the sides of it. But you can see it's um, quite busy with uh, minor in here. So that's a culture that is reaching the end of its life cycle. Uh, not because they won't breed anymore, but because this culture needs to be reset in terms of all the algae that's growing in there. Um, so I, what I do, I just grab the culture that needs to be reset. I pour it into a clean container like this, which I've already got a heap of wire in here um, that unfortunately you can't see because they're so tiny. I'll get them up here. And the camera won't focus on them, but they're all those really tiny particles that kind of make it look like there's fuzziness on your screen. That's all Moana. And all you do when you reset a culture is you pour it out like that, um, so that there's a heap of them into this, like into your container or vessel. Fill it up either with clean water, uh, with no dechlorinator because dechlorinator will kill them, um, and then you can feed them yeast, or you fill it up with green water to probably the halfway mark and then you'll see the culture start to explode you can harvest a heap of them out of there at that point and then pour in more green water till it's full and then they'll have another population explosion again pour out half the culture into wherever you want to feed them or if you want to start another culture do that again and then just fill it up with green water and just keep doing that until it starts getting disgusting like this with all the other algae growing around the, the container uh, in which case it's time to reset and clean the container. And usually I just put the container into the molly tank like this. And then when I've got a chance, I scrape out all the algae from the inside for the mollies to eat as well. And then I've got a nice clean container. They've eaten anything that could compete with the Daphne out of there. I still on occasion will clean out the container thoroughly after that. So after all the algae has been scraped out into the tank, I will go and get uh, bleach or something and bleach a container, wash it out thoroughly, then reset it that way every second or third time. But every first time it's fine, just put it back into the green water culture for the mollies to have a munch on. So I think that's pretty much the basics for your culture. Now, if you're trying to feed a fish room, like you, you've got it 
the fish addiction like me and you've got tanks everywhere like this, keeping up production to feed everything can be tricky but not impossible. You can use buckets like these, these are all holding plants at the moment, but the idea will be, depending on this, how, how much you need to scale it, you could use IBCs, you could use buckets, you could use small containers, you could use a million containers to feed everything, it doesn't matter, but it follows the same principle. I would put your reset culture, so you only need a few individuals to start off with in your bucket or green water or clean water that you're feeding yeast. Your culture that's halfway ready to be harvested from, so that may be the one week stage or two week stage after this, depending on how fast they're multiplying for you, because that is dependent on the temperature. And then the, the bucket that's ready to just feed everything. So at this stage, you see there's heaps of Daphnia in here. Just take a small container, put it aside with a couple individuals. I find if you've got 20 individuals, if, you, if you're willing to count like all of them, and there's roughly 20 in there, that's a great way to start off a new culture. Um, and then just for the rest of them, feed your fish room, clean the bucket, it gets put there, this one goes down and so on and so forth. And you just keep a rolling uh, bucket of or buckets of Daphne going. And that's a great way to feed your fish room. My friend does it a different way. So he'll get a bucket like this, fill it up with green water, have the, the Moana in there because he feeds only Moana for his little fish. And then he'll do every day a 50% water change. So with the siphon hose, when he's siphoning out the like the bucket, he doesn't use the, the gravel back attachment, it's just using a, a hose that's created a siphon. And by doing that, he's sucking out heaps of the Daphne in there into a container. That's a 50% until he gets to the 50% mark. And then he tops up with green water, whatever moan is left in there, multiply, he feeds the rest to his fish. And that works really well for him. I like having three buckets just in case I mess up and I like to have a spare culture. Um, so it's always good to also just have like a little container of, of bars or something with more Daphnia just as a backup in case any of your ones crash and you know you've got a nice clean culture to reset everything with. If you do those couple of things, the cultures are super easy to maintain. Um, when you're doing your green water culture, it'll get to a point like this. So this tank is half full and it needs to be topped up. So I will feed all my Daphne cultures the green water first, then I'll top this up um, because you don't want to top up your green water before you feed your cultures because if you're using dechlorinator, the dechlorinator will kill your cultures. So feed your cultures before topping up your green water again with dechlorinator if you're using dechlorinator. If you're like me and you've got a home water filtration system that's taking all the chlorine and chloramine, whatever, out of the water before it's getting to your tanks, that's absolutely fine, won't cause any issues. I have used straight tap water for Daphne cultures before, uh, just to like give some fresh water and volume when I've either had a culture that's reached capacity and about to turn and crash because there's an ammonia spike and that hasn't killed them, but I know um, that may be just dependent on how much chlorine is in the water. In my taps, you may be living somewhere where they put more chlorine in, but I haven't had an issue with the chlorine from tap water killing the Daphnia outright, but the dechlorinator will do it. So I hope that's been informative and that you've learned something. Um, I have a previous video for how to do the Daphnia cultures, which was actually they were all in these tanks, but I've had to use these for other things now. I still stand by what I've said in those videos. So if you're doing the Daphne in a tank, do keep your crushed coral and stuff like that. But at that time, all I was doing was I was harvesting like my friend, 50% water change and then topping up with fresh water, then feeding um, yeast and stuff to them. So that wasn't an issue. But when you're feeding green water and you've already got your crushed coral and stuff in your green water tank, um, you don't need to worry about having crushed coral in with your cultures if they're in the containers. Oh, and I just lost my aquascaping scissors. Um, so yeah, so that's another thing. So for for there for beneficial bacteria, because obviously you need something for if you've got the fish in there. I still have crushed coral in both of these tanks. You see a little bit at the front here. Um, the rest of it's at the back for these ones, but. 
that keeps the carbonate hardness up and of course the calcium for the developing shells of the copiapod. So um, I think that is actually everything now. I haven't got the large Daphne on my website yet. It should be hopefully in the next few weeks, uh, most likely after Christmas. Uh, this being just before Christmas, my website's going to be a lot lower in stock of things because I'm not overly fond of sending stuff in the mail, particularly live plants in Australia over Christmas. We've just had a 36 degree day today and I nearly cooked myself outside. I did lose fish, it was so hot outside as well, so I don't want to be posting plants or cultures out in this heat because it's just asking for trouble. So if you are after a culture and you're on the Gold Coast, you can message me and I can organise something that way, but I don't think I've got anything active on my um, website for the time being until things aren't so crazy with people posting stuff. One thing I forgot to mention, um, when you're feeding your Daphnia to your fish, you harvest it out with your pipette, and then without sticking pipette into the water, just push the Daphnia into the tank like that because if you stick the pipette into the water, uh, especially if you've got floating plants around there, that's going to be the most likely entry point for uh, other copiopods getting into the pipette than into your uh, Daphnia culture, which will cause them to crash. So that's just another tidbit. Um, so if you have any questions, leave a comment. Um, if you learned something, hit the like button or don't, it's completely up to you. And I will see you in the next one.